So, um, what was your favorite drawing as a kid? I believe it was the hoe. At least it was my favorite drawing. And any kid in the class could draw it. Because it just came so easily to all of us. Even a kid who got an F in drawing could easily make it. That's how our homes used to look like. The trees, which were always laden with fruits. The whole class had similar looking houses. And we had a river flowing next to it. We had birds. Birds being the easiest. We used to just make the small hours and the birds were ready. Right? That's how our homes used to be. Fast forward to now. But isn't this how we all actually live? If right now you were given an option to draw my home, what would you draw? Would you draw this? Or would you draw that? If I was given that option, I would still draw what I drew as a kid. Where all the trees, the birds, the river, we all live like one, like one happy family. Now you would say, it's very impractical. How can we all just pack our bags and shift into a green haven? But what I do know is, we can convert our existing concrete cities into a green haven. I, Priyanka Amar Shah, an urban farmer, I'm here today to tell you exactly how to do that. My dream, it's a green and a healthy future. I want each one of you sitting out here to encourage you and to empower you to lead a sustainable lifestyle. So you would say, why is my dream so important than yours, right? Because the alternative future is very, very frightening. Roti, kapra, or makan. Food is the basic necessity, right? Then why are we suddenly devoid of a favorite kanda bhajiya when the onion prices go high? Or suddenly we are served patta gobi with pav bhaji. Do you know your food actually travels 40 to 100 kilometers before it actually reaches your food plate? And with the increasing fuel prices, the vegetable pr prices are ought to go high. And the amount of CO2 that it releases, it's an another concern altogether. Now I know you wouldn't feel the pinch in your pocket, right? But go back home, ask the CFO of your house, that's your mother. How does she manage the monthly budget when the vegetable prices go high? As per NSSO, the urban Indians, they spend about 6.6% .6 of their monthly budget just on vegetables. Spinach made Popeye strong, right? Can you say the same for your spinach? Do you know exactly where does the healthy, green, leafy vegetable come from? You see it right. They actually grow adjacent to the railway tracks. And you see the gutter water right over there? Okay, it's known as gutter water farming. So that's how your green leafy vegetables are washed and used for irrigation. As per the Food and Agriculture Organization, by 2050, the global food demand is going to rise by 70%. In India, India is going to be the second populous country in the world with 1.6 billion people living in India. B will consist of 17% of the total world population. But we are going to have access to only 2% of land and less than 4% of water. Now think about it. Where are you actually going to grow your food? And the population living in the urban areas is going to be about 900 million people. Yes, you guessed it right. Your Viral locals are going to get even more crowded. So think about it. Where exactly or how are you going to take care 
of the food, hygiene, and environmental issues then. Since the first Earth Day, that is 46 years ago, the global temperatures have continuously been rising. Just last January, when we were enjoying our Mumbai winters, right, suddenly the, the temperature shot up to 36 degrees Celsius. And that was the second warmest Jan in last eight years. There are way more people in this world and it's continuously growing. We are occupying far more land that actually belongs to the oceans, to the trees, and to the wildlife. I think no wonder NASA is trying to find so many planets, because we're so hell-built not destroying this one. And if you think, still think, all the reasons that I just mentioned were not good enough, I have a watch over there. I have a simple exercise for you. I want all of you to just hold on to your breath for a minute on the count of three. One, two, three, go. And let me remind you, smiling, laughing, giggling, that all accounts for breathing. It's been 25 seconds, and I still see some of you already given up. The batch over there, like I said, laughing means you're breathing. We still have about 15, 15 seconds more. OK, I think most of you have given up, right? And uh, it's not even a minute at all. So now I know who are the smokers out here. <laughs> so jokes apart, this is how difficult it's going to be for you to breathe if you don't take the correct measures right now, today. That comes to the most important topic of our discussion. That's sustainable lifestyle and sustainable urban farming. Like I mentioned earlier, sustainable lifestyle has always been a part of my dream. So how did I go about it? And how do we achieve that? I started by composting. That's recycling at source. Since childhood, we've always been taught that we are supposed to throw our waste into the bin. But we've never been taught about the next step forward. Mumbai generates about 8,500 tons of waste daily. And that is just dumped into the landfills just like that. Out of that, the wet waste that we have, okay, it consists of 90% air and water. So think about it, we are actually paying and we are wasting our time to transport air and water to the landfills, and which are actually badly managed, which in turn releases methane gas, which is 10 times more harmful than your carbon dioxide. And guess what, guys? News flash. The only dumping yards that we have, that is in Devnar and Mulund right now, they are operational only till this year. June 2017, to be more precise. So, when I started composting, I thought, what do I do with my compost? It's like, OK, I'll grow veggies with it. You saw what I was doing? I was actually converting yesterday's le leftover to compost to grow tomorrow's food. Sounds like a very nice idea, right? Everyone thought I was mad. So like, what are you even talking about? Where do you think you're going to get the space in Mumbai to do farming, where each square foot of area actually costs as much as gold? They weren't wrong. They were right. And then I just looked above. Because sabka answer to upar wale ke paas hota hai, right? And then I got my answer, chappad far ke. Terrace farming. In the next five years, the state government is actually planning to build about 5.5 lakh buildings. Even if we take about 15 to 20% of it, that's about one lakh building. And on an average, 
1,000 square foot of area is the size of a terrace. So we are talking about 10 crore square feet of terrace area available that can actually be utilized for farming. A thousand square feet of terrace can easily feed about five to six families. On an average, we all have about four members in a family, right? If I'm doing my math right, we can actually feed about five to six lakh families. That's about 20 lakh people. And, and now I'm not even talking about the existing buildings that are there. And the best part about terrace farming is that the most important resource that we need, that's the sunlight. It's available for free for most of the year, 365 days, especially in Mumbai. And for some of you guys, for whatever reason, if you still think that terrace farming is not an option and you don't want to give up your terrace, vertical farms is the way forward for you. I'd heard this lovely quote. Why try to explain miracle to your kids when you can just let them plant a garden? This was by Robert Brault. For me, it's just not about miracles. I believe it's more than miracles. Because when I started teaching farming to kids, I realized that they started respecting their food. They started eating healthy and they became more conscious towards the environment at a very tender age. But you all would say, why organic? Because when you're growing organically, you not only get access to fresh, pesticide-free, healthy food, but you're also creating a sustainable ecosystem within the environment. So apart from the six pets that I have at home, okay, six for last evening, at night they became seven, okay. So apart from that, I actually get to see these beauties on my site every day, day in and day out. And when you're trying to build an ecosystem, even the people who are not even closely related to each other or not even connected to each other, right, right here we have a farmer from Thane whom we have been convincing to go back the organic way. We have an Alzheimer patient who's learning about kitchen gardening and a toddler who's making seed bombs. When they all do that, okay, they all become they all become a part of something that's bigger than themselves. Just a small act of doing something for the nature gets all of them connected to become one. What I am trying to say over here is, we really don't have to save the planet. Trust me, the planet is way bigger than all of us. Nature will always find its way to survive. If not in this form, maybe some other form. What we have to do is we have to save ourselves. We have the responsibility to actually pass on what we have got to our children and to their children. If not, at least make it better. You guys sitting over here, all of you, you guys are the seeds of the green revolution tomorrow. I, Priyanka Amar, an urban farmer, I just don't want to live in a concrete city. I want to live within an ecosystem. Thank you.